Oh, well, we're well off tonight. We're about yeah. seven seconds off. Oh, well. <laughs> right, I'm going to start with an apology tonight. <laughs> but for cocking up the Battle Royale video today. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, I, th I think I know what happened. I think I advertedly saved the wrong thing in the wrong place. <laughs> and then when I did chop it, I chopped off too much. So I do apologise. But the content's there. Yes. That's the main thing. The content's there. And let's have a look. Has anything changed? Nope. It's still even Stevens. It's still even Stevens. Four votes apiece. Ah. Afternoon, Good Mick. Morning. Good afternoon, Mick. Uh, um, we'll be telling you round about eight twenty how you got on last week. Evening, Pulsar. Evening. Oh, we don't need to tell him because he he can click and see. Yeah, you yeah, could see, but it's always nice to have it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, now that it's closed, there are no more votes. It's a definite win for somebody. Yes. Uh, someone has now decided that he's going to join us. <laughs> Here he comes, sniff a dog over the ear. There you are, then. I'll keep you quiet for five minutes. Good evening, uh -oh. everyone. You'll be lucky. Yes. Yes, we've, uh, a few, we've sorted out a few technical bits today. Um, it's, been <laughs> quite, it's been quite a quiet week this week. Which I don't mind. I like nice, quiet weeks. It allows me to get on with other sieve. It's been wet all week, apart from 11 o'clock this morning until half an hour ago. <laughs> it started yeah. raining again. Yeah, we had some... Well, when, when I went shopping with Lee, we had to actually uh, undo, unwind the windows. It was warm. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Dave. Good evening, Zeb. So as I said, it's been a quiet week on the channel. 3,780 views. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. What have you been watching? For some reason, people are still watching uh, the little Leeds Record Fair video. Strange. Um, oh, they, want to, they want to see you miss the bus stop, don't they? Yes. No, we didn't record that. <laughs> yes. 81, 80 people saw that one. The Battle Royal... Quarter final from last week, 80 people watched that. Mm -hmm. But number one still is Steve Harley. Retro That's Man. nice. It is. That's nice. And for the first time, the short is not one of our normal shorts. It's the Needle Drop Saturday from last week. A bit of Ian Gillen, Unchain Your Brain. Yeah. A little Good bit of a very there's yeah, going to be changes going forward. Changes? Yes, yes. Because you've been doing a certain genre, you're going to switch things up a bit. Yes. So, 28 days, 19,244 views, 68 new subscribers. We had 10 last week, so we're ticking over. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Yes. Yes. You lovely, lovely people, as Nico McBrain would say. And in number three, Leeds Record Fair. That has picked up loads. I know there's lots of people putting stuff up that were there. So I just wonder if it's all part of that sort of thing. 229 Probably. people. At number two, Richard and I's Bad Covers. <laughs> At 217. Don't forget this Saturday, we have got our 40th video and doing glam rock and status quo believe it or not 279 people that's got a surge again but yeah. still out in the top um sure is bonner motorhead and how many people disliked it <laughs> so how can you hit dislike motorhead please so the big I, I have a funny feeling it's people who have a beef with the channel. Yes, I think rather so. than people who dislike the music. Yes. 
Um, we've had 324,671 views. That's a lot of people watching. Yes. Garbage, isn't it? <laughs> and we've now got 1,618. No changes. Um, Derek Riggs pulled out a little bit. <laughs> He's at 4,062. Slade still chomping away at 4,764, but Quo are now at 8,612. That will never get beaten in a million years. Oh, uh, I, from, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, what have I been listening to this week? Well, apart from listening to a lot of live albums, there are a few live album rankings coming up. We've got some big ones coming up, so I've been really diving on with them. Um, Marmalade, I'm having tr I've done five of the 12, so we might have to, yeah, there's a few issues there. We've got a new one in the mix. We've got a bit of Opeth, which I know will um, please Jen, or as we, you know, the B-sides. I think she's a bit I, of an Opeth. What? B-sides is her hat. No. No. Opeth. Yes, yeah, you saying Opeth. You didn't mention that this afternoon. Yeah, Opeth, one of one of twelve. Like Blind Guardian is one of twelve. <laughs> yes, we did talk about it. Uh, Jade Warrior, I've nearly done Jade Warrior, and I'm boy, I've enjoyed this band. Thirteen of the fourteen, uh, and Joe Bon Mamasa, fourteen of sixteen. And I've listened to and I've completed the Bare Naked Ladies and Circus Devils. But I have been listening to lots of other stuff as well that uh, I won't hmm. tell you about at the moment. Are you sure about Opeth? I am very sure about Opeth. Because I've got them down as being 13. They are 13, oh, no. not 12. Yeah, you, you, you are right. I'll alter that now. They are 13. Yeah, because yeah. <clears throat> so they're in progress now, are they? Yes. All right, that needs to be lifted. Out. Yeah, you yeah. see, you, we, we don't get it right all the time. Yeah, I've enjoyed Jade Warrior Pulsar, and uh, I shall be starting to buy some of their albums, I think. Good evening, Jimmy. Um, so uh, that's enough of me for a minute. No, hang on, you, you can waffle on for a minute because I need to. Make a little adjustment. He's, he's, he's altering the things I, I didn't perform. Anyway, yeah, no. um, there is someone out there that I'd love to know who it is, but randomly putting dislikes. If you're watching, mm. why? Why don't you like? You're not proving yourself anything, guy, or mm. whoever you are. You know. There we go. Anyway, as it's oh, well done, as we're coming, in, as, we, as you know, when you get into the semi-final, you will uh, have to contact me on my email address with your address so I can send you a fantastic oh, mug. I want a mug. Um, I have, I've already have, I've have. REM's been done. Been done. I think the live albums have been done. I haven't I, done my favourite. I haven't done a retro ranking on um, REM yet, though. Might do one of them. Yeah. Yeah, but do, REM yeah. have been done. I'm sure Dave will find the uh, actual. I'll, I'll find it in a minute, but uh, I'm. So if I might myself get rid of that, because that's a bit better. Anyway, right. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what happened today with uh, the uh, I used to set, save all the starts and just add the videos. I think I over I saved something where I shouldn't have saved something, and I didn't check. So there we go. Lesson for Ian: before you publish, check everything properly. But I think today I've had a bit of a rush today. I've had. 20,000 things go on today, apart from mm. things. Believe it or not, you did REM 1st of February last year. Well, there you go. Anyway, 
Are you ready I'll, to do your hatches I'll, and matches and dispatches? Yes, and I, I'll I'll do a link uh, REM in the chat whenever okay. I've done this. Okay, so who have we lost in the last week? Well, we've lost eighteen plus one, and unusually, we haven't gone. Normally, Ian and I go through the lists and decide who should or should not get a mention in, in case there's some query about them. But anyway, uh, people whose deaths have been notified since the la last live stream that we hadn't mentioned before. April the 1st, Michael Ward, American North American rock guitar with the Wallflowers and School of Fish. The 2nd of April, Jerry Abbott, an American country music singer, songwriter, record producer. The 3rd, Joe H. He's a Scottish bothy balancer. Uh, and Monikita Millie, a Peruvian Hoyano singer. The 4th, we lost Keith LeBlanc, an American industrial and funk drummer. His death was announced on the 4th. He used to play with Little Axe and Tackhead. The fifth saw the departure of C.J. Snare, American musician with group Firehouse. He was also a songwriter. The sixth saw Christopher Castin Aman. He's better known as Dutty Dior. He's a Norwegian singer, rapper, and songwriter. The seventh, Michael Boder, a German conductor. Clarence Henry Frogman, the American singer. Antoinette Mendes, an Indian theater singer, and Joe Vieira, a German jazz saxophonist and educator, all passed away. The eighth, John Card, a German-born Canadian drummer with the bands SNFU, DOA, or Subhumans, along with Evgeny Kungurov, a Russian opera and pop singer. That's a compilation and a half. The ninth, Bob Lanise, an American big band jazz trumpeter. He's best known for playing in the James Last Orchestra. Who have been requested? That's going to be fun, isn't it? Also on the ninth, Mulukan Melesi, an Ethiopian Tzita singer and drummer. Dieter Rexroth, a German musicologist. And Max Werner, a Dutch progressive rock singer and drummer with the band Kayak. And yesterday, Mr. C, American hip-hop DJ and radio broadcaster, his death was announced. Now, the plus one that passed this week is a gentleman, Sir Paul Leonard Fox, CBE, commander of the Order of the British Empire. He, at one stage, was the controller of BBC One, and before that, he worked on a programme some of us will remember called Sports Scene. And it was while he was working as a journalist for Sports Scene, he came up with the idea of the BBC Sports Personality of the Year trophy. He then went on and became controller of BBC One. And while he was controller of BBC One, he commissioned a bunch of programmes. He launched Dad's Army. He commissioned the two Ronnies. He also commissioned Bruce Forsyth and the Generation Game and Parkinson's Chat Show. So, a fond farewell to him. Thought he'd be notable because quite often Ian will bring up Dad's Army or the two Ronnies or something. Chances are Leonard Fox had a, had a hand in it. Anyway, that's the dispatches. Birthdays today. 28 years old is Summer Marjani Walker, an American R&B singer. 37 today is Jocelyn Eve Stoker, English singer, songwriter and actress, but we know her best as Joss Stone. 45 today is Chris Gaylor, an American drummer with the All-American Rejects, along with Sebastian Granger, a Canadian musician with the group Death From Above. 46 today is Tom Thacker, a Canadian musician with bands Gob and Some 4-1. 47 today is Daniel Stein. He's better known as DJ Fresh, He's a British musician, DJ, and record producer. DJ Fresh. <laughs> today. And Ian will should know this person. 
Oliver Oli Rydal. No. German basis for Rammstein. Oh. 54 today is Delroy Pearson. He's an English. Now, they, they quote him as being an English rock vocalist. He sang with Five Star. Do you remember them? Yeah, I remember them. 55 today is Chisato Moritaka, a Japanese singer. But more importantly, the lovely Geris Matthews, Welsh singer songwriter with Catatonia. 63 today is Nigel Pulsford, British rock guitarist with the band Bush. 69 today, Neville Staple. You remember Neville? The Scar singer from the specials? Yeah, just thinking, God, is he? Yeah, 69 today. No, if you get these people. <laughs> get 71 today is Branimir, aka Johnny Stulic. He's a Croatian rock singer with the band Azra. 73 is Robbie House, an American country rockabilly guitarist with the US band Snuff. And Granddaddy today. And thank God we had him whenever we did. At the marvellous age of 78 is Robert Brinley Joseph Harris OBE. We all know him as Whispering Bob from the old grey whistle test. And a Northamptonian. Exactly. Matches today. We've got four plus one. So, in 1911, May West married a fellow vaudeville actor, Frank Wallace. They got divorced 32 years later in 1943. In 1978, the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, married her second husband, the American actor by the name of Glyn Turman. They got divorced in 1984. In 81, Valerie Bertinelli, she was an American actress. She married somebody you know, Eddie Van Halen. They got divorced in 2007. Van Halen? I yes. thought she was Mrs. Van Halen. <laughs> and in 1992, Christopher Reeve. He married actress and singer Dana Morosini. And they stayed together until his passing. But the plus one is a divorce. And Heather Locklear in 2007 divorced Richie Sambora after being married for 11 years. So our talking point is 1987. Uh, in 1987, January the 21st, we had the second Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. And this class is a lot bigger than the first. We had the coasters, Eddie Cochran, Bo Diddley, Aretha Franklin, who we've just mentioned, Marvin Gaye, Bill Haley, B.B. King, Claude McFadden, Ricky Nelson, Roy Orbison, Carl Perkins, Smokey Robinson, Joe Turner, Muddy Waters, Jackie Wilson, Louis Jordan, T-Bone Walker, Hank Williams, Leonard Chess, Ahmet Ert Ertigun, Jerry Leiber and, Mix and Mike Stoller. And Jerry Wexler as well. Uh, interestingly, Aretha Franklin was the first female artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. February. So we saw something in the sky. Supernova, it's now known as Supernova 1987A in the large Magellanic cloud. It was the first naked eye supernova that you could see since 1604. March. Are you showing films? Yes. Would you by any chance be showing uh, something lethal? Yeah. Oh, in that case, I'll leave that for you. And yeah. Story I'll, about I'll go, that. I'll go with the other big events of March. Well, big for the UK. The Herald of Free Enterprise accident occurred. Ferry overturned and sank due to a, an open an open door. I oh, know. I was. I went to see Deep Purple that night. Uh, 
April the 3rd in 1987, there was a sale of jewellery at Sotheby's. Wallace Simpson, Duchess of Windsor, her jewels were auctioned and they raised over £31 million, including the famous Cartier Panther bracelet. May. Well, Russia wasn't happy because Matthias Rust, an 18-year-old West German pilot, made an unauthorised landing in a little light aircraft near Red Square in Moscow. He, he avoided all the air defences. They didn't pick him up. <laughs> June. Margaret Thatcher became the first British Prime Minister in 160 years to win a third consecutive term. And believe it or not, George Galloway was elected as the MP for Glasgow Hillhead. How long has he been around? Too long. July the 3rd, your former boss made the news. Richard Branson and Per Lindstrom became the first, and I'm very specific about this, the first hot air balloon travellers to cross the Atlantic. Not a helium balloon or any other, a hot air balloon. And it's been recognised by uh, Guinness. August the 1st, MTV Europe launched. Elton John threw the switch, and we all know what the first video was. It was Dire Straits' Money for Nothing. And it went downhill from there on. <laughs> September. Yeah, September. This guy was fit. Paul Lynch of Great Britain. He did <laughs> 32,573 push-ups in 24 hours. He was a record breaker. <laughs> now, October 1987, what happened? It was my Michael first Fish. birthday. It was, it was, and six days later, Michael Fish told us all not to worry, that there wasn't oh, a hurricane coming. And it was. It was the great storm of 1987. We had 115 mile an hour hurricane force winds hit London and much of the south of England. Uh, November of 1987, Van Gogh's painting Irises sold for what at the time was a record $53.6 million at auction. And December the 30th, I feel sorry for the people in Zimbabwe because you elected Robert Mugabe as Prime Minister. Sorry, Prime Minister was elected as President of Zimbabwe. Oh dear, what a dire day that was. Anyway, enough political commentary. We don't do that. So I close that. I go to this. And I go you to... Do the first? Right. Okay. Well, it's actually 1916. It's quite close. Well, Nick will be jumping up and down because who's next beat Quadrophenia? And as Either. I've got, uh, uh, Mick, you've got my email address anyway because you do correspond with, with me. Can you, I'll send you one, but can you send me your address? So you will get this wonderful mug coming all the way to America. And I won't tell you what's on it. It's very special. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. I'm yeah. saying nothing. <laughs> yeah, so Mick is the first semi-finalist. Well done, Mick. Yeah. Oh, right. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm looking back. I'm just looking back through the chats to see what I've missed while I was doing blurbing and evening Simon, evening Martin. Oh, not just the it's not just the song, the whole album. Evening Jimmy. Oh, Purple and Yes are going on tour. Yeah, that'd be an interesting combination. That's right. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. That so, would be nice. Hopefully, this next bit's going to work. <laughs> I, like, I like it, Jimmy. Yes. Congratulations and commiserations to the Who. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to add this to stage and we're going to make it full screen. And off you go, young sir. Hopefully, it'll work. 
So we start a new story next week, and we're going to do it on Monday. And who are we going to be looking at for the next six, seven weeks? A, a request I know. I know to people. It's the wonderful Tangerine Dream. Yay. So part one will be the 1970s Tangerine Dream. Well, then they look uh, different. <laughs> I'm but, saying nothing. I'm saying yeah, nothing. That absolutely is. They're great. And uh, Perfect Side, which you seem to be really enjoying. Richard McCook will be happy about this one. Because it's Diamond Dogs, and so would they. I'm going to pick the perfect side of Diamond Dogs. Tuffy, eh? Tuffy. But I'm going to have a bash at it. Tuesday. We're going to do a little bit of altered image, a little bit of Claire, Claire Grogan. Can't get enough of Claire Grogan yet, so I'll be doing the altered images album ranking. Now. Retro ranking was going to be top 10, but I couldn't. I couldn't leave off because the um, the honourable mentions was as long. As, so I went, oh, bugger it, we'll do the top 20 songs of a band that if you li in, lived in our house, you just had to listen to them because they were my dad's favourite instrumental band, The Shadows. Next third Wednesday, Marathon Day, we're going to have a little bit, another request, lots of requests this week. The Grateful Dead. Now, a band that I'm not know much about, I've only got a few bits, I've enjoyed listening to The Grateful Dead. Next Thursday, we've got the third quarterfinal. Again, we've got the Dark Horse of this competition. The Colour of Spring by Talk Talk. <laughs> up against the revolver by the Beatles. That will be an interesting one. Yes. And what are we going to do next week? We're going to remember to save the correct photo. We are going to do it the right way. I should check that tomorrow. Don't you worry, folks. <laughs> and then we've got a British top 10 from 1956, which has got some weird and wonderful... Um, Stuff in it, I can tell you now. <laughs> Friday, we have got a big day. Friday, three videos. First up is a live album ranking of Manchester's Elbow, followed by two new albums. The first one is the brand new album from Fido, it's actually a double album, and it's called Black Red. As you can see, what I'm holding, and then. The first Blue Oyster Cult album for ages. And it's not what you're expecting. So looking forward to doing that as well. So that's what's coming next week. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of me. There we go. Uh, are you able to do it? Oh, good man. Yeah, right, that's good. Oh, excuse me. I beg pardon in case you heard that. Cooking some lunch. What are you having then, Lisa? Anything nice? And if it's nice, can we all have a plate, please? Yes. Because I'm starving. I had to interrupt my tea to do this. Oh, I know. All right, terrible. Anyway, so I'm going to be made big in a moment. I'm going to put up the link anyway. So this week I've got plenty of movies to show you. Not like last week. So, Mr. Producer. Uh, okay, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready and willing. There you go. Okay. First one I'm going to show is a nice little spy movie starring Michael Caine as the good guy and Pierce Brosnan as the bad guy. Does anyone remember that one? The Fourth Protocol. Yes. Brilliant movie. Great. I love watching it. Yes, it's a great one of my favourite spy movies for Michael Caine. We had two great war movies, Vietnam War movies, in 1987. The first one being the brilliant Hamburger Hill. That is gutsy. And <laughs> I love the bit at the end when they are trying to get up that final hill. 
Absolutely amazing. But the best one of that year was Full Metal Jacket, which was absolutely brilliant. The drill sergeant, an actual drill sergeant, and That's right. that was an excellent film. Also, another war film. I'm gonna I've been waiting to do this. Good morning, Vietnam. Came out. I love this film. It's Williams well, at his best. At his best, yeah. We've gone from that to the sublime of a police academy number four. <laughs> from the sublime to the ridiculous. Yes. Yes. I I I, I good evening, Monk. I people slate these films, but I love them. I think they're they're a film that you can just put on and forget the world for about an hour and a half. Yeah. Evening, Mike. Also, we had a Death Wish film, Death Wish 4. Not the best. Not the best, but it's still there. But one of the <laughs> funniest... Yeah, Robocop. I did have that on VHS. I've now got it on a... Yeah, we'll talk about that another day. But my one of my favourite comedy films... Of 1987 was this gem. It was. It was unusual. Uh, Robert you, 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 no, you, yeah, but you you looked at you looked at the cover and you thought this isn't a comedy. Oh, it is so funny. Richard Griffiths is absolutely superb in that. I love that film. And they did mention it sort of, but uh, it was the first of the. Great leap of weapon, Danny Glover, Mel Gibson. Now, I saw this at Leicester Square. God, those were the days. Yeah, I was actually in London for a gig. Well, I can't remember which one it was. Um, we, it was there in the afternoon, and this was on at Leicester Square, so we saw this in the afternoon. We did we go and see? I'll tell you where it was. It was, I think it was uh, Magnum. Went to see Magnum. So Lethal Weapon in the afternoon, Magnum in the evening. Fantastic day out that was. Mm -hmm. I love this movie. It's just brilliant. TV. Do you know what made its debut in 1987? Books by Ruth Rendell. Mm -hmm. And it's the Inspector Wexford. Starring George Baker. He played that, that role brilliantly. He did. Right. Well, he, he he had experience because he he'd also done some of the Marvel stories. Yes, he TV network movie at Christmas Day, and I remember watching it. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom on Christmas Day on the on the telly. I didn't watch it. I was at work. Blackadder three came out in nineteen eighty seven. The one set in Georgian times. Prince Regent. <laughs> My favourite episode is the dictionary one. I love that yes. one. <laughs> That's just what I was thinking. The dictionary. Yes, the dictionary one. And also at Christmas, nineteen eighty-seven, the very last episode. Yes. After two runnies. And aren't I glad I mentioned Sir Paul Fox, the man who commissioned the two Ronnies? Yes, the man that commissioned Paul Fox. This was their last. It was nine series, I think. I think this is, yeah. Oh, 12 series and specials, and and that is 70 hours worth of genius, as far as I'm concerned. I love that. So there's some bits of movies. So... Uh, it's timeless stuff because you can always put it on and it's still it's still funny to this day, especially the little stories that they had. Yes. Um, I sometimes, the raspberry blower. Yeah, I do love watching uh, the little stories and the worm that turned. And, and, yes, all, and most, of us, most of us, including our dads, sat and watched it purely because the girls were dressed in hot pants. <laughs> Yeah, so there we go. There's the uh, one to come up if you want to come back. Yeah, I do as well. Absolutely brilliant film. It's one of the most realistic Vietnam films. Uh, 
absolutely classic film. There's, a, there's only one really, really sort of almost authentic Vietnam one, and that's that's for another day. Yeah, that'll come up. <clears throat> yeah, I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah. But good morning, Vietnam. There's a lot of that apparently that was. Oh, spot on. Yeah. He, he based it on, uh, on a lot of his stuff he based on fact. But the whole film was based around fact. But uh, Robin Williams went in and re did a hell of a lot of research on that. Yes, I remember the hurricane of 87. Yeah. Nothing happened, Nothing happened in Northampton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we we escaped that one. It yes. was just after some, my twenty first birthday as well. That was. Yeah. Some some people have phoned the BBC saying there's a hurricane coming. No, there is. Don't don't worry. No, there's no hurricane. We don't get hurricanes here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yes, we did. Yeah, I quite, I quite agree with Simon. RoboCop was a great movie. The original one was brilliant. I don't, I don't like the rehash ones. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Especially, especially, especially like, streaky bacon. I don't know that bacon that we had, that bacon cooking up in Leeds in that little place we had our butty. Oh, oh. wonderful it's, smell. It's got, it's, got to be, it's got to be streaky bacon because you get all the fat and the smell. Mm. Oh, talking of that, I was in the supermarket today. <laughs> Good evening, everyone that's come in. Uh, my mum was like, this lad that we're picking steak, and he picked up a piece of steak, and she says, you don't want that. That's got too much fat on it. So I whispered in his ear, you tell your mum, that's where all the goodness is. Hey. I says, that's yeah, where you taste. I said, you don't have to... She went, don't encourage it. It's fat. I said, no, you can't have a bit of steak without a bit of fat on them. It's got to have. Well, the only one that doesn't is... Uh... Yeah, it was. Yeah, so I, 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 she didn't like what I was saying to him. <laughs> Ooh. Hey. What happened there? You throw. You've done it again. What, what have I done now? I don't know. You you froze. You froze twice. Oh dear. If I disappear, I will have to come back. So I'll just the link's in there somewhere. There it mm. is. Am I not? Yeah, Paul sounds right. Is that so you? I need to go. Fine. Excellent movie. Yes. So let's get some people up here because I don't like talking to, to myself. <laughs> Good evening, Andy. Oh, Welcome yeah. to the stream. <clears throat> go to there. I would need to go to. Mm. I'm just going to. Uh, He's not coming out and get the graveyard shit. Yeah, Jimmy doesn't want to do graveyard today. <laughs> so if anyone else wants to come up. <clears throat> Currently yeah, it's 9-7. 9-7. I'm going to I'm just going to um, uh, send Dave a WhatsApp, so. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> yeah, <so laughs> I think you know what it is. <laughs> Mike, Mike's waiting. Jimmy, Jimmy's waiting for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I've just. Oh, yeah, you've got it. I'm here. <laughs> oh, come up, stop. We'll, we'll have a chat first. You don't have to go show straight away. God. 
Let's come up with another chat and put the world to right. You have. But I'm getting an echo off you and you're freezing occasionally. Oh, echo, echo. Delay, delay. Bunny, bunny, bunny. Yes. Yeah, it's gone again. Okay, no worries. Just to be on the safe side, to make sure it's not me, I'm going to come out and I'll come back. Okay. Unfortunately, Stevie, you come second. Yes, he was. Uh, you come second, you lost by a few votes. It was a tight thing. Oh, well, thank you, Mike, for joining me. I was on my own. Jack Jones, well, dogs looks out is. Yeah, it, it took me about half a dozen clicks to get in today. It was the, the thing that Stevie found last week. You know, instead of getting straight in, it's uh, signing with YouTube, signing with uh, Google. Oh, good grief! So, so anyway, you know, sort of, it took about four clicks to sort of uh, sign in with my YouTube account. Right, I'm, I'm not good off now, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's another reason I wanted to hang on a little bit, actually. Cause... I know, I know. I, I drink first today, didn't I? It wasn't just because I don't want the graveyard slot that I got awarded last week, but um, I had a shave about um, an hour ago, and I, I used some new shaving gel for the first time. It's some Nivea stuff with hemp in it. And it's cut my neck to shred, so I was hoping like all the bleeding will have stopped by now. I'm not sure it has. God. So if it's a bit, if my face or rather my neck's a bit graphic for you tonight, then I do apologise. But it's, it's the, I'm blaming the new shaving gel. Yes. Well, no, you, 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 always, you always look pretty ropey, Jimmy. So it's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, yesterday I put up my little shorts with Steve Hackett in it. Hackett. It's one of his classical albums. And they were quite, they were questioning it. So like the, the bots didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I had to put a, a request in. Well, come on, put it up, put it up. And they did this morning properly. Wallies. <laughs> so um, uh, yeah. uh, Stevie thinks he's get, coming up for a mug, but unfortunately he's not today. Not this time round. No. Close voting. I've got to go, folks. I know what this is. All right. It's either the neighbour paying hey. in baggage cash. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, what's the upstairs? Mike, are you seeing are you seeing in freezing occasionally? Sorry? Are you seeing in screen freezing occasionally? Uh, not really, no. Well, I can't tell at the moment because he's not there. But uh, no, yeah. it's not not freezing. No. Well, why is mine? No. I'm not no freezing. Reason. There he goes. No, 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 no. Fine, fine. Yeah. I don't know why it is. Any, anyway, oh, well. Ian, you mentioned with Nail and I. Yes. And that's a great. It's a great drinking film. It's uh, it's with Nail and I. Because you you have to take a drink every time they take a drink. You have to have a drink. Yes. Yeah. I'm two always... hours later, you're you're under the table. Yeah. yeah, it is a great movie. Forgotten about though today. People forget about how good that movie was. Yeah, it's it's absolutely brilliant. Interesting. You're, you're right about Richard Griffiths. He made he makes that film. Yes. I've seen it once. It was years ago. I I need to watch it again because it is a it yeah. is a you know. It is so weird. It is so weird, and it's it's brilliant, and it is hilarious. Yeah, did you uh, get get back in the van? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's, that's one of the great lines. That, was yeah. it Richard E. Grant? Get back in the van. <laughs> and they drove around in that rather battered up Jaguar, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's it's an absolutely brilliant film. I mean, I can't I can't remember sort of all of it, but there are so many great scenes. Because there's a there, there, there's a scene in a tea room, isn't there? Where they where they drink it, they're, they're hard drinking in a tea room. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it's, I mean, Richard Griffiths, he, he was just a diamond in that. He played an absolute creepy yeah. uncle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Anyway, I've, I've been to a gig today. Have you? Oh, did you go to the one at the... Uh... Yeah, in-store at Jumbo. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, Jane Weaver. He's absolutely brilliant, so... Seeing her properly next uh, next Thursday um, at the Brood and Elf. So, you know, I got the album and, uh, you know, had it signed. There you go. To Mike, love Jane Weaver. There you go. What more could you ask for? Sure, I'll put you big so you can show everybody that the wonderful album. Yeah, yeah. There it is. It, it, it's an absolutely brilliant album, this. Oh, I should go and check it out. I mean, I remember you know, when... She, she, we was up there. There was someone about to go on stage as we were leaving, weren't there? Yeah, I can't, I can't remember who it was, but I'm, I mean, judging by the people in the shop, they were all sort of pretty young people, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, a lot younger than yes, us. I can't, I can't, yeah, in fact, in fact, um, Jumbo have now got a YouTube channel, oh, and uh, they they've started. They, they've only just started it recently, and they've. They're uploading their in-store gigs, so might be worth a worth a yeah, watch if you're interested. Out because yeah, that'll be worth watching. Yeah, yeah. There's a great Leeds band called English Teacher. We play, played there on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday evening, and they were good. Yeah, another, yeah. another quote from with now, You need working, boy. <laughs> there were so many great lines. Yeah. Well, for a change, shall I go first? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, Wait, well we don't want to do with you, Jimmy. No. <laughs> I'll take the graveyard shift. And as it's my bit, live stream, I'm going to show more than 10, but only two. I think I've done how going. Right. I'm going to start off. I've got to make myself big because Dave's not here, is he, at the moment? So I'm going to make myself big. I'm going to start off more love for the art of noise. Oh, and this is their third album, Incense No Nonsense, and it's got the soundtrack, the song to uh, Dragnet. You know the Dan Aykroyd Tom Hanks film. All right, absolutely brilliant little album this is. Um, their third album, and probably their last of their great albums. Uh, what label it's on? It's on China Records. This one. I brought this when it came out as well. That's how. You know, one week I'm buying heavy metal, and the next week I'll go and buy the art of noise. Talking of heavy metal or heavy rock, White Snake's not. The, well, it's called 1987, but it's White Snake, and this is. The embossed version. Mm. Yeah, it's got Still of the Nights on here. Give me all your love tonight. The worst version of Crime in the Rain. Uh, not my favourite album, to be quite honest. They changed. It was all about America. But the cover's pretty good. <laughs> Up next, Mr. Roger Walters. And I actually saw this on stage. Absolutely brilliant. They had the DJ booth and the DJ. Uh, brilliant little album from Mr. Waters. Went to see that at Wembley Arena of all places. My next one, the last album I actually brought by Mike Olfin on album, Islands. It's got Bonnie Tyler on it. Oh, God. <laughs> I hate her, but uh, it's it's not the best album. Oh, Gat Pulsar saw the radio car show. It was a brilliant show. Up next, went to see him on this tour twice. Gary Moore, Wild Frontier, Over the Hills and Far Away. Right, the great version of Friday on My Mind. Uh, this was a dynamite tour. Great to see the late, great Gary Moore. Wonderful album. Loved the back cover. 
Up next, a little bit of Ronnie James Small Person and the Dream Evil album. Sunset Superman's on here. Night People, great tracks. This is the last, what I think, of the great Dio albums as well. Love the cover of this. Bit boring in the side, it's got a picture of the band. They had a bit of Deep Purple as well, and I saw them on the 7th of March, 1987. And Bad Company supported them on that night. Bad Attitudes on here, uh, Strange Ways, Black and White, it's got the Spanish Archer. Pretty good album. Uh, bit of Pink Floyd, went to see them at Wembley Stadium. Momentary Lapse of Reason, or as we call it, the David Gilmore solo album. Because the only people that credit on it are Richard Wright and Dave Gilmore. Good album. Went to see these on this tour as well. Joshua Tree. Saw them at the cut the old Cardiff Arms Park. Not the Millennium. But it was the old at Cardiff Arms Park. One of my, that's my favourite U2 album. And of course, we had that in 1987, didn't we, Mike? We did. Except I've still not got that on vinyl, you know, mate. Oh, dear. It, yes, it's a cover album. We all know that. But God, it's the best cover album I own. There is not a bad track on there. And of course, it's the proper version. Look. That was good. Yeah, and get on the back as well. Picture of the band, Susie. Little album. And last but not least, my favourite Marillion album came out in 1987. Mm. Mm. No. It's got sugar mice on it. So I'm happy. I like sugar mice as well. I think that's a great song. I just think this is the best album it's got. Fish's best writing on it. Side one is great. The band, I love, and the picture was a bit different as well. First time that they'd incorporated themselves on a cover, uh, and I think it's better than Misplaced Childhood. And a lot of people say, Oh, that was the best, but no, this is the best. And guess what's in it? Mm. And mm. in 1987, if I wanted a tour jacket. It would cost me $29.95. But I didn't buy that. I brought the sweatshirt, which cost me £15.95 of my good money. I love it when that, like, you, they put these in there because it's just amazing how much things were back in the day. So there we go. That's me. Gone first. Make myself small again. Hey. What am I? Yeah, that I, I mean, I'm, I'm the that that's through the looking grass. I mean, every people I talk about that album today is say it's the best covers album you'll ever get. I mean, I don't my favourite. I mean, their version of this town aren't big enough for the both of us. It's just brilliant. Uh, sea breeze is good. The passenger, there's just so many good things. The wheels on fire, yeah. If I see this, Mike, I'm gonna I'll get it for you. Well, yeah, well, you know, I'm I'm off to uh Leeds Record Fair again this Saturday, but you know, you know where I'm going first off before I buy any records, don't you? Going to that uh little shop. I'm gonna get a bacon bussy, aren't I? Oh. Yeah. I think but, you and I will be so uh, jealous. I missed out on that. I, I arrived, what, 10 minutes too late, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, God. That's a die yeah. for. They're in such big roles as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I think me and Nick will be up just for a bacon butt. <laughs> 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 At some stage. When it's a yeah. little warmer. 
So there we go. So is anyone going to go now? Or we... Now I've done the first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Jimmy. I'll, uh... <laughs> I'll go. Right. Here we go. Um... Right. First off, these guys from London, House of Love. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, and this is uh, this is Shine On. Is it an EP? Is it a mini album? I don't know. I suppose it's just about long enough to be an album. Six, but, what, seven tracks? Yeah. Uh, I think it was eight tracks on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's four. Four sides. Yeah, it's an album in my books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There you go, and it's on. Uh, it's on on Creation Records. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I really, I, I just really love that song. You know, Shine On. I just thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it's a brilliant song, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the, you know, one of one of my all time favourites, definitely from you yeah. know this period of time. Right, and also in the eighties. Oh, hello, Stevie. Hello. Yeah. I was buying a lot of uh, a lot of world music. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, Maury County. He's from, he's from Guinea. And uh, it says on the hype sticker there, the uh, includes a European-wide hit, uh, uh, Yeke Yeke. This is a Quaba Beach. And, uh, yeah, it's a great album. I mean, Maury County's Cora player. And... Um, like like so many sort of uh, albums and sort of artists from Africa at the time, um, they sort of gravitated towards Paris, and you know, lot, lots of brilliant world music came out of Paris during that time. And you know, this is no exception. So that's Murray County. Uh, next up, something that isn't world music. This is uh, the Oyster Band. Um, there was. I suppose they're a folk rock band. Um, they're, they're, they're more folk than rock, really. Um, they started off as uh, the, the Oyster Cayley band. And uh, I saw them quite a few times during, uh, you know, during this sort of time. This is Wide Blue Yonder. And uh, got some guests on here, sort of uh, the great uh, Catherine Tickell, who plays Northumbrian Pipes, you know, the ones that you, you put the bag underneath your, your arm rather than blowing yeah. Uh, she's on here, and then uh, uh, Clive Gregson and Christine Collister, who were a sort of quite a famous sort of folk duo on there. And this is this is on the Cooking Vinyl label. And uh, you know, Cooking Vinyl started in sort of '85 or '86, and uh, it was one of those labels that just had loads and loads of really good music uh, at the time. So that's that's the oyster band. Um, also, uh, Strange Fruit started. Uh, issuing the pill sessions on vinyl about this time and there's, there's quite a few quite a few were sort of uh, released in 1987 so i thought i showed this one this is wire and this is a session from 1978 so there you go that's pill sessions i've got us and got uh, yeah yeah the, 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 there's a couple of others i could have shown but uh i didn't and then always have to show something from leeds don't i yeah, the wedding present, George Best. Oh, it's wedding present, the debut album, George Best. Classic Absolutely thing. brilliant album. So this was conceived and uh, created in Leeds. And uh, even though David Gedge is a, a Mancunian, we can sort of forgive him for that. You know, so great tracks on there. Everyone thinks he looks daft. Uh, uh, then the Shatner, a sort of homage to... Uh, the captain of the Starship Enterprise. Anyone can make a mistake. Uh, uh, give my love to Kevin. Lo loads, of, loads of brilliant, brilliant tracks. And uh, yeah, that's George Best. Um, a band that sort of divides people. I think you know you either love them or hate them. Uh, and it's Sonic Youth. So it's you know Kim Gordon and uh, and Thurston Moore are the, uh, uh, the the main protagonists here and, and and this is sister this is this is one of their better albums but you know I I, I think I think some of their albums are pretty ropey actually um, but, 
but this is this is a good one. And Kim Gordon has just had a a, a solo album out, and uh, I tried I tried listening to it, and I, I just couldn't couldn't get into it. And I thought, well, I've plenty of other stuff that I could be buying, so I decided to pass on that. Right, <laughs> another another album that's on the uh, on the cooking vinyl label. And this is The Real Sounds, uh, also called The Real Sounds of Africa sometimes. And it's uh, Wendy Zacco. And um, there's there, there's a brilliant track on, on, on side two of the album. It's called uh, Tornadoes versus Dynamos, 3-3. Uh, three, three. And it's basically a, a football commentary, but to music. And it's brilliant. So uh, there you go, that's uh, the real sounds. Right, a 12 inch single. Doesn't need any, any explaining. There you go, the Pogues, Fairy Tale of New York. Brilliant song. Right. And then a band that I thought you were going to show, Ian, had three albums out in 1987. Their first three albums The Mighty Beavers Frond. So this is uh, Beaver Through the Looking Glass. And then a couple of others here. There we go. Inner Marshland and uh, uh, Miasma. Yeah, the reason I didn't show them, because I knew you would. All oh, right. You see, I had them in reserve. I thought, well, if you show one of them, right. <laughs> no, I've, I've got, got the others. I but knew you would show them. Yeah. Last but not least, uh, Band I love, Ten Thousand Maniacs, oh, and this is nice. in my tribe. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, this is their best album. Uh, but all the albums with Natalie Merchant on are, are absolutely brilliant, and and the final track on this album, Verdi Cries, is an absolutely brilliant track. So, yeah, so that's my that's my nineteen eighty seven for you, folks. Oh, good, very song. good, very good. Yeah, cheers, folks. Very good. Yeah, commiseration, Stevie. Well, I think it's just a big joke at the moment. They're, they're just saying, oh, we're just kidding. So I'm I'm here to get my mug. I'm ready. <laughs> well, that's, can you hear me all right? I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. It's that, that's democracy, as they say. Yes, and it was a fair vote. Uh, yeah, that's the Americans. Right. The Americans did it. I'm going to blame the Americans. Yeah, yeah. You, you made you made a you made a great case for Quadrophenia and uh, well, yeah. You can't. You can't in, in, in my in my opinion, in my opinion, you should have won it, Stephen. So. Wow. But I give him his due that he made a great call for the um for who's next as well. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Very sporting. Very. Yeah, sporting. I want half a mug. <laughs> <laughs> Just send me a mug handle. Well, I'll send you the mug handle, yeah. Right. He's going to for buying ping pong balls. He, I don't know, he doesn't show. Anyway, we've got a good one today. Sex Pistols and... Uh... Yeah, I, was just, I, was just wait, I was just waiting for Michael, because Michael usually comes on second, doesn't he? Because we, you know... We we have a, a good yeah. one or two good good ones, and then Michael takes it down. Then we we pick it up at the end. You know. Yeah, it's only just yeah. turned five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that, that's his role, Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was banned last week, wasn't he? I think he was banned behind the scenes for the week because the week before he showed Todd Rundgren's a cappella, which was, you know, it's a bit hard yeah. banning it, but I think it was fair. I think. <laughs> 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 Jimmy, how are you doing? You 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 go next, Jimmy, or yeah. um, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Oh, I'm, I'm not coming. Uh, uh. You got you've got the Norman Colliers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know why that's happening. No, you're all right now. You're right now. I think. Okay, good. I mean, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I just want to. Couple of points first before I start. Um, couple just directed at Stevie. Um, my response to your set list video that's coming out tomorrow. 
by the way. All oh, right, excellent. Well, then I am going to email you. By the way, I was, I was going to do it today. I, was going to say, cause I, I, I didn't really want to sort of, you know, discuss too much, of, you know, my <laughs> business on, on here. But I did think you were allergic to sending me emails at, at one point. But, and, okay, and the, I will contact you. The other thing is, and I only discovered this about an hour before, you know, eight o'clock before the stream went live. Have you seen which albums is getting a reissue at the end of May? No, I'm not very clued in. Oh, with that. Uh, for the first time in, in, it'll be about 31 years, it's the other two's debut album. Oh. Yeah, it's only, I only saw it at the New Order store so far, but I'm sure it'll be around other places. Well, I, I don't think it was. they were very available back in the day, were they? I don't think they printed it. Uh, I've, I've, anyway. got, I've got it on CD, but um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's getting another CD issue as well. I think, I think I saw a 12-inch once, and that was about it, you know, and then I've never seen anything again, you know. Yeah, I thought I thought you'd be interested in that. Um, and one more thing that I, I wanted to mention, and I, I meant to say this little anecdote um, back when I did my sodcast with Ian and Jason about radio. Um, but it, uh, when Ian showed the Marillion album uh, "Clutching at Straws," it reminded me of an anecdote that I meant to, that I meant to tell. Um, when I was doing college radio in '97. Um, my f best friend, also the program controller of the station, he also compiled a weekly top 20 based on how much stuff was being played and viewer requests, uh, not viewer, listener requests, I should say. Um, and um, it's kind of like a little joke to him because I didn't, I don't think he liked the track very much, but I'm, I made sure to play Sugar Mice by Marillion every single show. And I think sometimes I even played it twice just so that I could get it in his non top 20. And <laughs> I played it so often, he had to have it in that chart for, for weeks on end. The thing was, it started out as a joke, but I do really love Sugar Mice. I do love that song. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I was kind of suffering myself for it. But um, yeah, I just uh, thought I'd share that, but mainly with Ian, but you know. You've yeah, all it's a good song. I mean, it's, uh, I, I love the video to it. Uh, there's the bit where Fish is at the bar and the rest of the band come out of the beer puddle. Yeah, I've, I've not seen the video. In, have, I, have I ever seen the video? Uh, it feels like I must have done, cause, but then like the song it mentions about being at a bar, doesn't it? So maybe I'm thinking about the lyrics rather than... A, yeah, a, I think this, if you want to find my address, it's number one at the end of the bar. I mean, it's yeah. a very sad song. Very sad song. Yeah, because I know it mentions the album title in the lyrics, doesn't it? Clutching at straws. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the most you'll ever hear out of me about Marillion, by the way. It's just like <laughs> it's, it's sugar mice, and that's about it for me. Like that's where yeah, the look, thing, that's where my interest yeah. begins and ends. I'm afraid. Sorry. Yeah, the B sides to a Tuck song. Well, my, my involvement with Marillion is very deep. It was it was at the record fair, and the, I said, "There's a scratch on this. Will this play?" A big scuff on it, and he looked at it, and, get, and he he saw what band it was, and he just struggled. Oh yeah, have it, you know. So that <laughs> that's the, I've got a Marillion twelve inch, so I'm sure it'll clean up very well. You know. well that's no way to talk about my beloved Marillion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've done it, next week is probably the last week I'll be showing Marillion. So yeah. Well, what about what about the uh, the the post fish years? Have you not got? I did. Everything I had on CD. I had them on CD, but I haven't even got them now. But I might be able to show. Yeah, I can still show something. <laughs> so, Jimmy, have you got lots of new order to share? I've got one obvious new order. Oh, um, well, you 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 go next then, because yeah, oh yeah, yeah, fair, fair, fair. But then um, I can rub it rub it in with the OGs. Yeah, uh, I uh, I've got ten things today as well. So. Uh, 87's been uh, been a pretty easy year to, to grab 10. It could have been more, really, but then that's cheating. Uh, but obviously, I will start with New Order, and it's another of the Hessian box sets. Uh, Substance, of course, compilation, back to 200C. Um, this was the first of these cassette editions I've got. Uh, this album I've now got five copies of because um, it got reissued. Um, that was a few months ago when it? it was recently and um i managed only, to get it on only five copies <laughs> i had um i've had this for a few years and i've had the original factory cd for donkey's oh. years 
Um, and then it came out again recently. I managed to get it on vinyl for the first time. But then it was bundled in, I got the new expanded CD. And I've mentioned it before, but I also got the New Order Store exclusive cassette, which is absolute garbage. Um, oh. if I wanted to throw it in the bin, to be honest. I haven't, but it is absolutely rubbish. So um, um, if you want it on cassette, well... You know, get this. This isn't actually that expensive. I think I paid between fifteen and twenty for this on eBay, and it's it's not in bad nick, really. Um, but get the original factory cassette or one of the nineties reissues. But no one really collects cassettes, do they? So I don't get many. But um, yeah, substance. Um, I'm sure Stevie will, will show a vinyl edition of that later. Debut album from Enya, self-titled. Um, it's technically a soundtrack. It's a soundtrack to the 1987 documentary series on the BBC, The Celts. So I'm just going to hold that where there's not too much glare. And I'm failing. Um, I've got this on vinyl as well, but it was the 92 reissue where it's renamed The Celts. So I thought, well, I'll show the proper 87 version. And then if we're still doing years by 1992 well, i might dig it out again even though it's a bit of a cheek cause it's a reissue but it was like a you know it's like a whole repackaging of it um i did do my enya ranking not too long ago and this this came seven out of her eight studio albums which sounds bad but i love pretty much all of enya so you know something's oh. got to come near the bottom um love that album but I think she's done better. Uh, speaking of groups or acts who I've ranked, of course, got to show number one in the Pet Shop Boys album ranking, their best album ever, actually. Uh, this is the Further Listening 2CD Expanded Edition, uh, similar to Please that I showed last week. Uh, nothing, not a bad track on here. Uh, One More Chance is the opener. Brilliant. What I've come to deserve this featuring Dustin Springfield. Um, Rent, great single. It Couldn't Happen Here, which was the title of the film that they released um, a few months or the following year after the album came out. It's a Sin, obviously. Heart um, ends with the beautiful King's Cross. Um, I mean, I've been a massive Pet Shop Boys, Boys fan for, for many years, but when I was doing my ranking, it was really between this one and another one that maybe we'll talk about there again if if we carry on into the 90s. But really, just for sheer quality on here, this had to edge out at number one. It's the best pet shop. If you only own one Pet Shop Boys album, and really you shouldn't own, you should own at least a dozen. <laughs> but if you only own one, make sure it's actually, will you? Mm. Okay. Um, more Depeche Mode. Uh, this is Depeche Mode's glory period continuing for me. Music for the Masses, another one that's the CD and the DVD set. I think the period 84 to 90 is, is Depeche Mode at their height, really, because when I looked at the ranking that I did for Depeche, this one is number three out of 15. Um, the only ones above it are Black Celebration, which I showed last week, and Some Great Reward from 84. Although I'm beginning to think I perhaps should have put this at number two, because this is really good. Never Let Me Down Again, Strange Love. Um, trying to read what else is on it without putting my glasses on. Uh, to Have and To Hold, The Things You Said, that's a brilliant track. One of their best you know, album tracks, deep cuts for me. Um, Depeche Mode, and this would have been their last album till till Violator in 1990, uh, I think that was. But this, I think, was the one that broke them in America because they started selling out stadiums and they did the big tour that culminated in the 101 movie and that concert and everything. Uh, great stuff. Um, one film that you didn't mention, Ian, and I'm not sure why, because I've ha I have it on good authority that it's an absolute classic. Uh, I've got the soundtrack for it. I'm only joking, by the way. Apparently, this film is rubbish. I've never seen it. But I have got the soundtrack album. Who's that girl? Um, Madonna is really a Madonna album. She's on it, obviously, but it's Madonna plus various artists. Um, 
I did do a Madonna ranking, that's quite recent, but I only ranked their 80s and 90s stuff, and this came six out of nine. Um, so it's got some good singles on it. Who's that girl causing a commotion? The Look of Love. And even one or two of the non-Madonna tracks I really like as well. But um, it's... Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen that film, but um, uh, well, it's Madonna in in film, isn't it? Like everything she's done, people criticise, don't they? Or what's she be sure all right in a veto, aren't she? What's a rhetorical question? But um, more Madonna because she released. Well, this isn't really an album. It's. Oh. Uh, it's got House of Love Syndrome, this. I'm not sure whether it's classed as a mini album or an EP. But You Can Dance, it's just remixes. I thought I listened to this once. Um, I did enjoy it. Um, it's got a holiday on it, is it? Yes, it's got holiday. Everything's kind of mixed together, like it's a big, long mega mix. And um, what else is on it? Spotlight, Into the Groove, Where's the Party, Physical Attraction. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's all right. That. I've only listened to it once. I need to listen to it again, really. Uh, I've shown plenty of Clan Ad, and fortunately, they did release another album for me to show for the 87 Focus. And this one is Sirius. Uh, there again, I think I've only ever listened to this once. This has actually got a collaboration with Bruce Hornsby on it. Can't remember which track it is, but he's definitely on this album because uh, I remember seeing him credited. There we go. Just, just being very fussy there. That is that is that an example of a sort of gatefold uh, outer sleeve? Yes, that's uh, that's gatefold protector. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, invention Richard McCook only discovered last year. Yeah, right. Is that expensive? Oh, sorry to detect um, the greatness no, of the really. I, I sort of I buy them like in lots of fifty, and uh, like like where I get them from, it's like thirty quid posted. Right. 50, which I don't think is too bad. Really good quality as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Worth having. Uh, next up, I think I've shown them almost every time, or it might be every time. Yellow, they released another album yeah. in 87, One Second. I did like this one. This one features uh, some writing and singing from Billy McKenzie, all people will remember from The Associates. And also, it features the duet with the wonderful Shirley Bassey. The oh, rhythm. I love that song. That's one of their. I think that's one of their best. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Uh, I do like Shirley Bassey. I mean, I only really know her for the Bond themes, but one of those. She's one of those like veteran singers who it's impossible to dislike because it, there's nothing. You know, there's nothing really to dislike about her. She's like up there, with, like Dusty and Aretha for me. She's just like a classic. Shantou sort of sort of thing, and you know, but to co to collaborate with Yellow, um, yeah, uh, marvelous. Yeah, I, I love these chaps, and um, this is uh, a decent album. It, I, I've not done a Yellow ranking because there's still one I'm missing, but um, I think this one would be quite high up there if and when I do do that. Right, and the next one to show you is one I've not actually listened to yet, so I'm kind of spoiling my own record roundup here. But I checked, and this is, was definitely originally out in 87. This is a much more recent reissue, um, so I can't really speak on it. I will have heard some tracks on it, though, because I used to have a compilation from this band which compiled some of their early stuff. But it's the second studio album from Pulp, and it's Freaks, uh, subtitled 10 Stories About Power, Claustrophobia, Suffocation, and Holding Hands. So, yeah, I've not listened to this yet, um, and um, it gets shown on not... <laughs> and this is how far ahead I am with my channel. It's not shown on the next Records Roundup because I show a different pulp album on that. I show the third one, Separations. This is actually on the one after that comes out at the very end of the month. So, um, yeah, I'm going to slip up one of these days, and something's going to happen that's going to mean I'm going to have to take a video down I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> due to some sort of tragedy or something like that. But um, yeah, if anyone if anyone has heard that, or if anyone has got that, like I say, there will be one or two songs I would have heard years ago on it from the countdown compilation. I've got to be honest, I've not I've not seen anybody really show that one. You know, no. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty it's, it's their pre sort of island record era, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. 
Um, the separations, the one from, uh, I think it was 92, and um, that one will be on the records roundup that comes out on Monday. Um, that one, they, they, they are starting to sound more like the pulp of the 90s, you know, the pulp of the mid 90s in that, whereas they still kind of, you know, the very, very weird new wave, uh, you know, quite gothic actually, certainly their first album, it anyway. And the stuff I remember are freaks, but um, yeah, so um, I'd show it, but I've not listened to it yet. And I'll finish with something that was a grail of mine. Uh, it was expensive, but I'm so glad I got it. Um, loved the duo so much. Uh, I went on a bit of a collecting binge with them um, last year buying a lot of their 12-inch singles, but it was the albums I really wanted, and this was the one that was the really expensive one. But I was able to pick it up for a little bit under its its supposed aftermarket value. It is 1987, What the F-U-C-K is Going On by the Justified Ancients of Moo Moo, oh. more known as the Jazz, otherwise known as the KLF and the K Foundation. Stuff like that as well. I think this mark is this one that's got um, a little, uh, yeah, similar to what Ian showed earlier. It's got a little uh, <coughs> hand drawn. Um, is, that, is that quite collectible? Because I haven't seen that. No, that must be a rare as Rocking Horse do. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was amazed this was included, to be honest. I mean, I've got no reason to believe it's, a, it's a, I mean, it will be a photocopy originally, but, you know, I think it, the, the person I bought this from on eBay, it was obvious it was a collector. He sent it like special delivery and stuff like that. And he sent me a couple of messages saying, oh, you've you've got a really good album there. I'm sorry to part with it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, um, 1987, this is the proper version as well, the version that they had to um, pull, up, pull off sale and um, burn the rest of the copies in Sweden, I think it was, near ABBA's premises because it was ABBA. Or their you know, the people who represented ABBA, yeah. who really, um, <laughs> stopped, who really stopped this because the um, the Queen and I track heavily samples Dancing Queen. Cool. This samples this, but that was the one that was um, that caused them to have to take this off market. Hence why it's more expensive. But yeah, um, that is my uh, one of the proud pieces of my collection now. Yeah. 97 by the Jams. Yeah. And that is my ten for today. Thanks, chaps. Well, well done. That's some great. Hey, so, hey, I'm well done. that, that um, merchandise yeah, you... sheet. Someone saw it, yeah. and then they just did a load of photocopies. And put them <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. that's it. Yeah. Anyway, you you saved the best till last there, Jimmy. That was that was brilliant. You yes. you just don't see KLF at all around the record fairs no. or anything. No, I mean it's it's all been deleted and yeah. Yeah, it's you know it's it's easy enough to find a lot of stuff on Discogs, but it, it's it, a lot of it is expensive, and especially the out al the albums um, is is really the you know the really the money pit, and and this one because it just didn't exist for very long. It's yeah, um, I was so delighted to get that. It's a really nice clean copy as well. Um, hi, Michael. Michael. Hello. Um, so yeah. Um, Great album, but that, the KLF are absolutely phenomenal, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before, we get, before we go on, I'll just show. I wanted to show this for Jimmy because I know he'll like it. Yeah. The twelve-inch version <laughs> of that. Uh, another, another great cover. <laughs> my college radio station. Thank, thanks to me winding my friend up. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to show. I bought a picture disc in '87. Ah. Dude looks like a lady. <sighs> Mrs. <Lady>. Bellfire. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I didn't buy some uh, right. yeah. <laughs> And this is the extended version, Jimmy, and it's got a lovely musical intro before oh, I go on to sing it. I haven't heard the extended version. I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to seek that out. Ohio, Michael Sand. Oh, hi, Ogozaimas. Hi, Ogozaimas. Hi. I just, just woke up. <laughs> it is really the middle of the night still. You made it through another night. Yeah. That's good. What is I it? I did. I'm able Half to sit five. up and take nourishment, Stevie. 
Good. Yeah. It must be what half five in the morning for you. Five. Yeah, a little bit after five o'clock. A.M. Uh, he he's normally awake by that time anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I find people don't need a lot of sleep, you know. Well, I was on Instagram earlier. Yes. Yeah. A message someone said. And you'd got a little green dot on yours, Michael, and that was ab about five o'clock UK time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, blimey, he can't sleep. <laughs> He's causing trouble 24-7. you got to, you know. The... Yeah. I did think something else, but yeah. I will not say it up there. <laughs> Anyway, now, yeah, now you know? Michael's here. Now, now Michael's here. Mike, uh, I've got a little bone to pick with your presentation last week because <gasps> uh, I watched it back, and you were talking about XTC's uh, skylarking. Yeah, yeah, it must be your favourite XTC album. I know, so, but I, well, I did a little bit of research, and I, I won't read it all. I'll just read you three sentences from my from the Wikipedia page. It says, <laughs> the collaboration with Rundgren proved to be difficult, especially for Partridge, and numerous disagreements uh, arose over drum patterns, song selections, and other details. And then midway, it says, uh, Partridge was satisfied um, with Rundgren's arrangements, but frustrated with the producer's, quote, patronizing and so bloody sarcastic remarks during sessions. And then I'll, I'll finish with the last sentence. It says, on the extent of the altercations, Rundgren said, there was a moment uh, Andy said he wanted to cleave my head in half with an axe, but there was never anything <laughs> physical, just verbal abuse. So, you know, <laughs> that's... Yeah. That's your track record as a producer, so you're quite... But I, th I think you should have included that, personally, in the presentation. Yeah, I mean, if you'd have... If yeah, watched, yeah, yeah, maybe. It would have put it into context, It doesn't sound it? positive, yeah. does it? It doesn't sound very positive. It's a bit of yeah. negativity. Anyway, anyway, Michael, Michael, yes. I, I clicked on a video the other day expecting yes. it to be you because it was a tour around uh, Tower Records in Tokyo, and it was... It's actually JT's record room. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he lives in he lives in California. And that was a much better uh, video. From what's that TV? It, it was, it was a good video. video. Yeah, 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 much better. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> you get more. You 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 can't. You get abuse everywhere you go, Michael. Don't you? It's terrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's, There's it's, no it's, escape. It's, we need to no, get Rocky. Does. We need to dust off Rocky's rules and see, you know, if if Stevie's final <laughs> cupboard is in violation of more than one, and then set set an appropriate punishment. <laughs> well, I've I've listened to a cappella once. That's enough. You know, that was torture. You know, <laughs> I said something the other day that something on anything should have been. A single record, and I'd like to. I'd like to set for the record. I was wrong. It's good as a double record. Right, right. Well, and, and Michael, as you as you just come up, would you like to go next? Because I my my stuff might be slightly similar to Jimmy's. So oh, I don't know really? If, I don't know how prepared you are? Uh, I'm very prepared, but you know, we really shouldn't have repetition on this panel. Yeah, we should yeah, have the good sense. We'll get on with it and don't ramble on. It shells a record that's yeah. already been shown. And if a record has been shown, please please show the, the temerity to let the presenter know that it has been shown. So we don't have to suffer through so much repetition, like when you do your presentations. <laughs> right. Ouch. Right. I shall go on then. Okay. Right. Yeah. Try not to ramble on too much. Let me have my coffee. Hold on. <laughs> mm. oh, that's good. Okay. Oh, okay. The, You've got three minutes. The year 1987. The soundtrack, some kind of wonderful. And there's a lot of British bands on this record, on the soundtrack. Did you know that? No. Pete Shelley, The Furniture. Blue Room, Flesh for Lulu, Stephen Duffy, Jesus and Mary Jane, The Apartments, The March Violets, Lick the Tins, and that's it. Now, every song 
is fantastic. Did you guys see this movie? It's by John Hughes. Yes or no? Really? No, yeah, I've seen it no. a long time ago. I've seen it a long time ago. Anybody else? No. Uh, no. I watched Pretty in Pink for the first time the, the other week. It's a copy of Pretty in Pink, isn't it, really? No, is it's it not. Pretty? You didn't even see... Wait a second. You didn't even see the movie. <laughs> Pretty in Pink. That, the storyline... That's a lie. Yeah. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Now, the March Violets, we know them as a goth band, right? Very, very dark. Not this, not this, not the two songs in this uh, this film. Turn to the Sky and a cover of Miss Amanda Jones by the Rolling Stones. Incredible. Incredible. Now, I covered this, I covered the March Violets in an earlier video of mine. That only 203 people saw, which is really sad. And if you get a chance, take a look. It's called Videos I Couldn't Complete and the Reasons Why. And I include a clip from some kind of wonderful where, what's her name? Uh, I'm sorry, I should be better prepared. Cleo, is it, oh, Cleo, really hot. Do you guys know who she is? The singer for the March Violets? I'll wait for your answer. Uh. Oh Christ! <laughs> my next, record. my next record. Oh, so sad, so oh. sad, so sad. You know, where's Elliot? Elliot was supposed to be here today. He'd really appreciate this one. This is Mavis Staples, only for the lonely. What a record! What a singer! I don't show any crap when I present. This is a great record. Mike, if you're curious yeah. about black soul singers with power, I would pick this record. If you get any record yeah. by Mavis Staples, this is no. the one. You don't you, you don't need to sell that. You don't need to sell that to me, Michael. I mean she she's absolutely brilliant, isn't she? Absolutely brilliant. She she could sing the telephone directory and I'd buy it. She sure could. There we go. And every track is good. I don't even have to name a track. If you see it, you should buy it. Great eyeliner. Yes. Yes. And that tear. You can give us a close-up of the tracks. Uh, here we go. And pause it. Thank you. <laughs> you, didn't even look at it. you couldn't even have looked at it that about it. It's like, it's like people watching your uh, your rummage video in the, in the in HMV, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will work on my cam work, okay? Uh. So, there's room for improvement. Next up. This was this was my introduction to Zydeco. This is Buckwheat Zydeco's uh it's another one of these. On a night like this. Oh, this is a great record. Great 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 record. It's got look at that track record. Thank that you. means that means my little girl, my little girl, and he's not a he, he's not. <laughs> watch, let's watch this. Watch this. He's not a nonce. <laughs> Thank you for that information. Uh, and and he does a cover. You know, if Elliot was here and he's not, and he should be, they do a cover of Marie Marie. You know who else who did that? That. The blasters, blasters. One of the instruments in this record is like a, it's a board that is textured. And, you know, the guy runs like a, a stick against it, makes, makes noise. And uh, if you, if you, if you look up Buckbeat Zydeco, he performed Mati Feed on the David Letterman show. It is marvelous, marvelous. Mike, I'm telling yeah. you, telling you. Uh, um, if you get yeah, one, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that sort of stuff, you know. I There'll mean, be a lot of that. Asian Zydeco, I like all that sort of stuff. Hedley would like that, but we record. It's I so good. There should be loads of that in Leeds. You know, Mike's got an open mind, Stevie. You know, he doesn't just <laughs> listen to like New Order and Echo and the Bunny yeah. Man. You know, he looks outside yeah. of the country. And he doesn't, he doesn't insult. <laughs> You know, artists okay, from other countries. It. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> John, John, John Hyatt. Hyatt. 
Good. Uh, Bring the family. Great, great record. And yeah, Memphis in the meantime. Uh, your dad did. I mean, every song is good on this record. Uh, he's got Ry Cooter on it. Nick, oh, Nick Lowe plays bass. There you go. One of your people plays Daniel. bass on this record. Yeah, I think John Hyatt's played on some of Nick Lowe's stuff as well. So I saw that thing they used to just help each other out, didn't they, in them days? Here's for Stevie, the track Thank listing. Here Sorry, you go. I've, got, I've got it. I've got it, Michael. Thank you. Okay. 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 Now, here's the part. Here's, here's the desperate part of my presentation. Now, we say released in 1987. Okay. So this was this was released in 1987, but it was recorded in '69. So is that a? Do, do I break the rules? This is Coco no, Taylor, I don't, you know. I don't know. Produced by Willie Dixon, great record, great singer, lover, and uh, don't mess with the messer, Wang Dang Doodle. Oh, uh, I love that. yeah. <laughs> Insane Asylum and Kathy McDonald covered Insane yeah. Asylum. Great yeah, yeah, all, all the hits. Up. You know, last week I wasn't on the program because I was really ashamed because they only had one record from 1986, and I'd like to show that now just to Hello. just to like <laughs> pad my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> the Golden Palomitos. Oh. And uh, they do two covers of Little Feet's so, uh, first record. They do uh, I've Been the One and Brides of Jesus. Great song. Brides of Jesus. Sid Straw. Uh, who else is on here? Oh, even even the late. Uh, who is the bass player for The Cream? What was his name again? Jack Bruce. That Jack Bruce is on it for one song. Carla Blay. You know, it's just a just a pickup record. You know, it's not. You know, they just have different different session musicians playing on it. Great record, my favorite. And that I did buy some records this week, but I'll save that for later to to entertain you. But that concludes my presentation for the year 1987, and I give the floor to the other one of the other panelists. Thank you very right. much. Yeah, love it, Mike. Very, so really, very good. So, so wonderful. So, why am I big? Because you're next <laughs> up. Yeah. Well, we should all be clapping, going, that was absolutely yes. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really. It, it just sounds so sarcastic when you do it, Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've been having another subs battle during the week, so it's been getting quite heated at, at, at certain parts of the week. So, anyway. Next. We right. have granddad's granddad's fishing hat. Okay. All right, Shall so, we thank you? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Right. Now uh, unfortunately I've left my collection of buckwheat Zydeco behind this week, but uh, I'm very broad minded in my listing. So I'll start with a banger. So this is um this is actually nineteen seventy nine. But it was released in '87. It is the the gold Joy Division Peel Sessions, which is quite yep. expensive on Discogs. And so there's the uh, Peel Sessions, Level Terrors <laughs> Apart, Sound of Music, etc. Collie for 24 hours. So that's quite a quite a collectible one. If you see that, yeah, uh, it's worth it. Like some run, run of the mill stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so we're winding it down for the Pretenders. So we've got the Pretenders singles. Oh, and I brought that. Oh, well, you know, 87. So everyone on there, that's like the um, vinyl tag. Everyone's a, a hit single, you know. So you've got Kid, Brass in Pocket, Talk of the Town. You've got it all on there. So that's the pretenders of the singles. So I thought I'd include that. Uh, another classic one with the original £5.50 label it is, of course, YouTube, U2's Joshua Tree. Um the tracks on there so that was that was them i think kind of at their peak yeah yeah at their peak and it's even got the um i think it's got the insert in there as well um insert photo so you got the the lyric sheet and the insert photo with the lyric sheet in that so 
So another OG copy from back in the day. Um, so I, I did, I did quite like uh, you two in that period. Yeah, I went to see them, Stevie, at the Cardiff Farm Park yeah. on that tour. That was a br that was a brilliant concert. You know, to hear most of that album live was just superb. I think, I think the rat when they got to the Rattle and Hum film and that that double album, I think that was it. That was their entire greatness for me and then they started sort of reinventing themselves um so another another live uh, a live lp everybody should have a double live lp so this is simple minds live in the city of light does yes, anybody I... know what city it was was it verona Lisbon? uh i think i think it was i'm rightly saying it was two wasn't it? it was paris and australia uh it was a combination i think one side one record is Paris and the other is uh, Australia. I might be wrong with that, so put in the comments if uh, if you see. But uh, that, I bought that quite recently at the car boot sale for eight quid. So yeah. uh, best version of Waterfront on that. Yeah, it has a very good version of that. Uh, this is a repeat, so I, I'm not allowed with the new rules. I'm not allowed to say anything. This is part of my <laughs> Madonna <laughs> collection. <laughs> Uh, but these, these were actually, that was a fiver, and there were a bunch of these in the charity shop, and I thought they'd be great for my nieces um, over in America. So uh, I've got a nice little Madonna collection going when, they, when they're into it. I didn't, I have got, please, but I haven't got actually, uh, but I have got the 12-inch of, uh, do you know what song that is, Jimmy? Um, looks like the cover for It's a Sin to me. It that. is indeed the cover for It's a Sin on 12-inch, so... I mean that was that was uh, like you say that was uh, Pet Shop Boys really gaining ground in their yeah. in their heyday. The next one is David Byrne doing the track uh, on one side and Ryuichi Sakamoto. I paid a tenner for this at the record fair, uh, but as Ryuichi had just died, and I love this uh, track off the Last Emperor. Hmm. So uh, this is the Last Emperor end title and, and theme by Right She Sakamoto and David Byer. So I quite uh, quite fancy that. I'll get the LP That's if I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, no, yeah. I, I, I think if I saw that, I'd definitely pick that up. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to rub it in as either. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> this is already been Oh, shown. please. So that's another one. So that's another OG copy. So, so you've got to save the banshees if you've got it. That's, that's one of the rules of this contest. Um, <laughs> now, keeping an open mind, I'm sure Michael has got... Uh, now, I haven't got any x mal Deutschland, unfortunately, even though I keep looking, but it's, it's so sought after and rare. But I do have a little bit of the Netherlands equivalent. Can anybody tell me the name of the band? No. Here's a... Tw <laughs> I'm sure you've got this, Michael. It's Clan of Zymox, or later as they were Zymox... Well, uh, everyone has that. Everyone has for depression. No. <laughs> so, 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 what are they like? Are they a bit gothy? A bit. Yeah, they're they're a bit gothy, ex mal Deutschland, but with yeah. a, a Dutch twist, basically. So uh, that's how I would describe them. But yeah. they're, they're, you know, they're very good in their own right uh, as well. You know, so like ex mal Deutschland, they, they had some about two or three really good twelve inches and two good LPs. So very similar kind yeah. of band. Um, I'm surprised you, you didn't show this one. So we're going into factory territory. So and Rooty Column, uh, guitar and other machines. It's 1987. Have you got that, Michael? I do not. I do no. not. So impressed. So impressed. impressed. That, I think this is quite hard to get hold of as well. You know, uh, anything, uh, Rooty Column. Uh, now, before you say anything, I, I know this is going to sound like it's 1988. So this is uh, one for Jimmy. I saw this. This is the soundtrack to Salvation. Uh, and if you look at it, it's actually got, um, was it Skull Crusher and uh, Touched by the Hand of God, but Cabaret uh, Vault. So I'll do the, uh, the track listing there on one side. Cabaret Vault. Uh, but I think this one is on, yeah, Le Disc. The disc, the clip, say, I don't know if you can see that, but it says 87. So it is an 87 release, even though uh, I think it's on Polydor. It came came out. So that, that I wouldn't say that's rare. It's a bit of a crap film, to be honest with you. But it's, uh, I don't know why New Order did that soundtrack. Do you know, uh, Jimmy? I don't know. Um, I, I wondered if it might have something to do with Michael Schamberg. He wasn't involved in that in some way, yeah. was he? 
the film. I don't. Know, I don't know. Well, Arthur Arthur Baker is on it, um, yeah. So that it might have been kind of a bit through him, mm. uh, and of course the classic OG twelve inch. I've got the seven. Yeah. I think I've got two seven inches of that. So it's touched by the hand of God with the great, the great graphics on it there. Great typeface. Uh, we'll do some cover recognition for Jimmy. I'm sure you recognise that. True faith, of course. True faith. And do you know what the re remix looks like? Yeah, because I've got the reissue of it. Yeah, it's the multicolored lead. Yeah, yeah. And it's got the word it's helpful uh, on the back clue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, <clears throat> this this is one Michael will have because he, he likes best his stock hits of. This is uh, this is an embossed copy, mm. embossed OG. Mm. I think this is I I genuinely I think this was like um, it was either twenty. 18 or 2019, I saw it on eBay for a tenner, would you believe? Wow. And actually got it for a tenner. And it's, uh, I think on Discos, it's crazy money now. It's like... Yeah, yeah it is. I've actually, I've actually put some nice inners on there, posh inners, and they're going through my collection. So that's New Order. This came about because... How do you know it? Um, do you remember how it came about? Was it What's the Name said his, his wife wanted all the hits on one tape in the car or something? Yeah, yeah. The he, Tony Tony Wilson. He wanted um, he wanted them compiled on tape and and CD as well for mainly for car stereos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, there's a genuine OG embossed. That's the one to get if you see it. Uh, but they are rather pricey now. So uh, uh, now I've left something till last. This is very 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 special. Um, they were known in the early 90s, but it was really sort of a one-man band by that time. So, But this is when they were a group, and I saw them, I'm just looking it up now, I saw them supporting uh, The Fall, uh, I think it was, it was uh, 1986, Southampton University, I thought it was Bournemouth I saw them, £3.50, uh, supported by The Beloved. Um, so you won't really, nobody shows this on the vinyl community. So this is, uh, the beloved where it is. This is them as a group and that's them on the back cover. There's some lovely tracks. I think Mike, you'd really like this one. Um, hundred words is a classic song. If pennies came from heaven and, uh, there's another one as well. Um, uh, I forgot what it is. Um, but yeah, so that this is the first carnation of the beloved. So if you see this album, get it because this is this is something quite special, I think, in indie terms. So that's 1987, and then of course, um, I think they kind of split up, and you'll you'll know the beloved sweet harmony. I think this is from '94. Um, so I saw this 12 inch uh, and decided to get that. So that's not '87, but that's what. The beloved are known as this sort of thing but that that was the origin of the beloved and when i saw them with the fall uh the fall were absolute you know total chaos and i was so impressed with the beloved i, I rushed down and bought that when i saw it so thank you very much that's 1987. oh yep yeah. no single. Oh, well, no thank oh. you thank you 12 inches all the way well, I've got some. I've I've just realised. Um, I'm, in 1987, I brought. I was one of my big hit people. 1987 was Gary Moore, and I've got uh, four 12 inches that actually the live recordings. I'm actually on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the 12 inch of Over Hills and Farther Away. And on the is it, is this 87? 87. Yes. Wow. And uh, I'm on the B-side, All Messed Up, that was recorded at Milton Keynes Bowl the previous year. On here, you get an extended version of Over the Hills, another version of Over the Hills as well. But the next one was Wild Frontier. And again, I'm on two, the two versions of that one version of this. I'm on Wild Frontier live at Milton Keynes Bowl. <laughs> I love this wow. this album. That's a great <laughs> picture of Gary. And then he released uh, his version of Friday on My Mind. And the version of uh, Reach for the Sky is recorded at the gig that I was when I saw Leave the Weapon. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, other than this is at the Hammersmith gig. I saw Garrett, I've saw Gary Moore at Hammersmith in that year as well. And uh, yeah, I'm on that one as well. <laughs> so there you go. Ian's, Ian appears on four 12 inches of Gary Moore. Impressive. I know, you know. I do have a copy royalties though. Did you not have the cure, Mike? I didn't show the cure, no. Oh, okay. Because no. there, there was that kiss me, kiss me, kiss me one. I haven't got that. I haven't got any cure. But... Yeah. I've got that on CD, so that's why I didn't show it. Yeah. Fair enough. I was, I was just getting into that period where I was sort of, I was buying some some vinyl and some CDs. So was I, was, I, I was just looking, you know, in, in, in a couple of weeks' time, you know, once we get into the early nineties, my my vinyl collection is quite thin. I don't know about anybody yeah, else. I've got one or two. Yeah. I mean, that's probably yeah. the last good year for me, really, with with vinyl. Yeah. You know? Um, and then it's it's falling off because I was losing interest yeah. at the end of the eighties. You know. Yeah. Actually, I've I've got a couple of things that. Because Stevie mentioned something, and then Nick's mentioned something in the in the chat, and I'd just like to uh, show a couple of things, if I may. Mm -hmm. You can. Yeah. Mr. Producer will. Excellent, Dutch oh. lad. There you go. This uh, early singles. It was uh, it was released a couple of weeks ago. So th this is eighty one, eighty two. So of course, at, at the time, I think I think Exmoor Deutschland were a, an all female band. Uh, early on, so it's got yeah, it's got some got some good stuff on it. But um, I, I'd ordered it. I'd ordered it from uh, from Jumbo Records, and uh, they were completely let down by the, uh, the the distributors. They didn't they didn't get. I any remember of... you saying you were going to get that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I got it from Rough Trade because it's a, it's a Rough Trade thing. The only the only show I have with it is that. Uh, the the whole album only runs to twenty four minutes, you know. So I, th yeah. I think I think they maybe could have given us a little bit more, but it's uh, it, it's a pretty good album. Well, and I, don't, then... I don't I don't know because they did four LPs and the the first two were fetish and toss toss skin, and yeah. I remember the twelve inches of Qual and Incubus Succubus because my friend Simon had all their stuff. But it was yeah. kind of like 83, 84. And I don't really re remember seeing anything apart from Matador after that on 12 inch. And that was 86. So, it, yeah, it was that's like... right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this has got uh, Incubus Succubus or Incubus Succubus as. Uh, uh, I th I think, am I right in saying I think it was like after 84, 4 AD dropped them? So that's why. I, th I think they of... did, yes. Yes. I, yeah. I, 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 I... And it's probably why this album is so thin, you know, because Scattered to the wind. You, you then get uh, you then get issues, don't you? You know, copyright sort of ownership issues. But yeah, that's yeah. it. And, and the other thing, other thing I wanted to show that uh, Nick mentioned that. Uh, hang on, hang on. You, you, you say it was brief. Was it any good? You enjoyed it? It was good. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a really good album, you know. And of course, anyone who likes losing the banshees is going to like it. Yeah. Aren't I'd buy it for the hair yeah. coloring alone. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's this quality. Isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I mean, you would do, Michael. Yeah, I'm, I mean, that, that's the most important thing about uh, any band, isn't it? The color of the hair. <laughs> yeah, it's essential. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and, and the, the other thing I was going to show, and uh, this is X-ray specs, Ooh. and uh, you know, they re released their first album. Germ for adolescence in seventy seven and it it took till ninety five to issue a second album. And this is it. Conscious consumer. And it was it was only available on uh, on, on C D at the time, uh, nineteen ninety five. And and this was issued that th this was issued as a sort of limited edition. So I've got number see here's uh, the OB, number four hundred and sixty four of uh, of five hundred. Wow. And uh, I'll show you the, the vinyl because it's quite it's quite a nice vinyl. There you go, probably probably blue vinyl. But uh, 
This is this this is the album that uh, Laura Logic actually does uh, play the saxophone on, whereas she didn't on uh, on the original. So it comes with a uh, comes with nice little nice little poster as well. But but I noticed Nick mentioned it in the chat because Record Store Day there's a picture disc version of this being issued. So uh, might well be worth picking up. I mean, it, it, it's a great album, actually. This, it's, uh, you know, surprisingly good. I thought they only had one it's, record. Yeah, this is, uh, the, you know, as I say, you know, they they kind of got back together. Um, you know, Polystyrene and Laura Logic sort of uh, uh, made it up again, and uh, this was this was the result in 1995. And how then the music. What's what's how is it? What's the music like? It's it's identifiably uh, X-ray specs, you know, um, the, uh, you know, it's, quite it's, saxophone heavy, you know. It's Mike, sort of, you know. Uh, really. But it's, it's, a, it's a really, really good album, I would say. Yeah, you can tell and, by the titles of the songs, Mike, that, it, you know, it does what it says on the tin. You know, yeah. it, they're, they're sort of mine, isn't it? If you look at the titles on the debut album, they're all weird and... Yeah. Them, yeah, it's, it, it, it's all very punchy, you know. I, yeah. I mean, I see, I see what crystal clear is four minutes thirty three, but but nothing else goes over about three and a half minutes, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of them are, are less than three minutes. Yeah, it's 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 not worth getting. So, so Nick, you know, if you if you see it on record store day, pick it up. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, that that was all I wanted to say about that. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some interesting stuff coming out on Record Store Day, isn't there? I won't go out on Record Store Day because there's the spun out records in Northampton. It, it, it queues right up to the top, near enough into the main town centre. It's ridiculous. Hey, no, no pain, no gain, mate. Do they? Yeah. There's, there's one down in a town near me, and it's like a bookshop. But you can only get one thing. You go in a queue, but you can only buy, I think, one or two things. And then you've got to join the back of the queue again. Oh, no. And when I, went, this, when I went two years, there was, there was one. Um, what's Who's that woman with the, the big hits in America? Um, who was the ambassador for Record Store Day? What's her name? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. There was only one one Taylor Swift, right? And there was a girl right at the front with a Taylor yeah. Swift sweatshirt and I was standing some way back with another girl. She was a really Taylor Swift fan with a Taylor Swift shirt. And I said, I hope they've got more than one copy. This is when there was a 10-inch ten, ten and the shop only had one copy. And she went in before me and she came out face really red and upset because it had been bought, you know. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah. yeah. It's so cruel, Stevie. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> you knew my you quality. wanted it. Jesus. <laughs> I was just I was just reading actually. Um, in '86, Exmal Deutschland supported the Stranglers on their mm. on their tour in Wembley Arena, and Matador was produced by Hugh Cornwall of the Stranglers. So oh, they were right. a bit of a tie up with the Stranglers. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, there's there's some quite interesting. Uh, Record store day stuff, and uh, I mean, the, the, the other day you were talking about Alan Sebastian, uh, Ian. Yeah, and um, there's a, there's an Isabel Campbell album out, Ooh. and she was yeah, but but it's um, oh what they called uh, Gentle Waves, a band called Gentle Waves, but she. It was a sort of side project of hers. Yes, yeah, it was a side still in Bell and Sebastian. Yeah, that's uh, that's coming out for Record Store Day, and of course, there's the uh, the, the Todd Rundgren double album, Stevie. Anything, oh, else? Does he have anything coming out? I might pass on that. I don't know. Does he yeah. have something coming out? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm tempted to buy. I'm tempted to buy that album. Which one is it, Stevie? And then gifting it to you. It's uh, it's called it's called Todd. Oh, yeah, his, yeah. Mm, mm. 
Oh, there you go. Even better. Even, even Michael doesn't like it. Even, even yeah. a hardcore fan is disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely should have been a single record. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of double albums that should have been a a single album. Hang, yeah. hang on, the, uh, the, I'm just looking at the Beloved page and it's saying where it is, is 1988, but just to prove it, it's on the Flim Flam Records there and it says um get the light it says 87 there so it was 87 so wikipedia is wrong as well well <laughs> that's nothing unusual there is because <laughs> I, I think you remember in 1989 the sun rising that uh, that song by the beloved mm. Do you remember yes that? Yeah, but remember. Then, by then it was only the um it was only the bloke uh, what's his name? John Marsh. The rest, of, the rest of the band had kind of had it by then. Yeah, I mean, there's there's talk of uh, some reissues of State Score albums, and some of them that haven't been put out on the on our al on album before. So I might dive into some of the later ones. There's one or two that I wouldn't mind with their later ones on album, but there's not many of the sort of 80s that i'm gonna be <clears throat> unless they're for 30 i'll find them in a uh charity shop at 50p i don't think i'll want to spend a lot of money on in the army now and ain't complaining i mean Jim, yeah. jimmy you you like things like ramstein yeah ramstein yes ramstein Rush, ramstein <laughs> sorry <laughs> I mean, you might you might like X Mel Deutschland if you if you want to go a bit more gothy, you know. Because when you look, you went on the Wikipedia page. I'm having a bit of a bit of a read of it myself when um, when you uh, Mike were talking about him and um, yeah, like sort of gothic rock um, type type stuff. I mean, I like this is a mercy. Are they similar to them? Maybe or no? yeah, I, yeah. yeah, there is a bit of a crossover. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I Absolutely. do like them. But, but, uh, but I mean, Anya Hewitt's sort of voice is very, very similar to Susie's in uh, some respect. Mm. So yeah. I don't know as much Susie in the Banshee. I know, I, I know bits and bobs, but I mean, uh, I don't know, I don't know for you also because the, the part of the attraction with like New Order and Fracture Records, you've got Peter Savile covers and you've got like bits of artwork, but I mean, surely. The contender, if not the equal, was um, 4 AD, you know. And if you mm. look at the XML Deutschland, particularly the 12 inches, like well, I remember my friend having one and looking and looking at like the 12 inch of Qual and thinking, this is fantastic artwork, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah. you, you know, uh, even this mortal coil, everything that everything it did, maybe with the exception of the pixies, I don't know, but it's just really if, if the attraction of New Order is also to have the artwork, then. 4AD, anything on 4AD is worth having a look at, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like um, I've reviewed them this week, Dead Can Dance. Now, they're more known for their uh, sort of neoclassic. I, I saw that. What are, you do, what are you doing putting What's the Name at number 10? That's one of my favourites of Dead Can Dance. <laughs> um, but their first album, the self-titled, that is very... Susie and the Banshees, Gothic Rock. It's and there's lead singer Lisa Gerrard. Sounds so much like Susie. It's unbelievable. And then they just yeah. changed their their pitch. Went into this Gregorian chants and uh, yeah, what have you? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like, I mean, I like all the Dead Can Dance albums. It's just it's one of them that. What one do you put at number at the bottom? I mean, if I saw, if I saw any vinyl by Dead Can Dance, like in Record Fair, if it's reasonably priced, I think I'd just get it, you know, just because it's them, you know, it's like a seal of approval. But yeah, I mean, I haven't. But heard again, you got the you got the same thing in that I don't think they printed that many originally, so they're like again yeah. rare as hence it's sort of they shouldn't really be rare, but they see they do seem to be. I don't know. Yeah, but if you see that first one, Mike, uh, Dead Can Dance. You'd like yeah. it because it does sound very Susie. I'll, I'll I'll have a listen. I don't I don't really know them that well. No, so you they're, they're, they're in there. I don't know if you like them. They do a lot of Gregorian chants and 
Yeah. Very eerie sort of, you and all that sort of stuff. But that first one's a proper yeah. post-punk I, sound. It's really good. So you think the first album and then leave it at that? No, well, I like the other. I mean, if you like, I mean, Jimmy, you might want to have a listen. You know, some of it's very clan in places, some of the dancing <laughs> and all that. I, I, I didn't like Gregorian chanting as well, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, so I'll check them out. I like hearing it in pop music. It's like, along with bagpipes, it's like something a bit different, but I, I like hearing it. Yeah. I mean, I like Enigma and yeah. they've had quite a bit of Gregorian chanting in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can, you, you can never get enough uh, Gregorian chants, can you? Was it no. Severance and the Serpent's Egg? Or... Yeah. Yeah. The I think it's come up with the Susie thing for us. Yes, Nocturne. Yeah. Oh, I think that'll yes, be yes. on my. Uh, yes. I think that's at the top of my list now. <laughs> yeah, it's a good album. It's a good album. Yeah, I've, I, I've heard it on Spotify, but I'd like a copy of it. It's one of them albums that I think I really need to go and buy. Yeah. yeah, I think it was Serpent's Egg, wasn't it? Serpent's Egg, I think yeah. you put yeah. it at number 10. Yeah. <laughs> Which is one of my like favourites. <laughs> well, at least you want to relitigate these things, Stevie. Sorry, say again, Michael? Let's not relitigate these right, things. Right, okay. Sorry, yes. Right. I went shopping this week. I got okay. this Tuxedo Moon. Oh. This, was, uh, this was produced... This was engineered and recorded by Giles Martin. He's one of yours, right? Yep. Giles Martin. Oh, Giles. Oh, right. Giles, yes. Giles oh, Martin. He and he produced it with Tuxedo Moon. These guys are from San Francisco. And uh, it's got a great track on it called In a Manner of Speaking. And to the open-minded guy on the panel, Mike, You'd really like that that track, in a matter of speaking, should definitely look it up. Play it on Spotify. I guarantee you, you'll love it. Love it. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll have a listen. And if it, if it's rubbish, Michael, I'll, I'll be back and complaining yeah. next week. I, right? I'm sure you will. Bring it. Bring it. Have you have you listened to all the Dead Can Dance, Michael? Um, I haven't listened to any of Dead Can Dance. I see. Right. Okay. Yeah, just you said open minded, you know. Yeah, well, I just you know, it, you know time is an issue. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, music is time. He's only got weeks left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, music is a time is a time based medium. You know, and you know, with all these live streams, we don't have time to listen to music because we spend mm. hours and hours talking on live streams. You ever notice that phenomena? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's the irony of it all, isn't it? You know, you you talk about music and you never have time to listen to it. This is a bit of a grail of mine. I got this, I found this for $5 uh, last week at Meruido. And uh, it is Romeo Void's first record. It was recorded at Mobius Music in Noe Valley, where the Dead Kennedys recorded a lot of their records and I had no idea there was a recording studio in Noe Valley. It's uh, kind of like near near between the, the Castro District and Bernal Heights. And uh, I spent a lot of time. I lived in that area um, in the 80s. This was 1987 that it was recorded. And in I guess I'll be showing this next week. Um, and uh, in 1987 it was the first time I ever went to Japan at the end of the year and uh, where I met my my wife, my current wife, and uh, I, that's also the year that I saw some kind of wonderful. So uh, uh, it was an area of, of town that I spent a lot of time in. These guys went to uh, San Francisco Art Institute, and uh, they only recorded three records, and uh, they're one of my favorites. And uh, if you see it, get it. The, uh, the killer track on this is White Sweater. It's all good, and it's a little bit raw and rough, um, but that's it. Romeo Void. That's what I got this week. Nothing else because I'm a bit skint, as they say. But you know, you know, I just bought a lottery ticket. My my number should be coming in. You can make me smaller now, please. 
Yeah, if, you, if your lottery ticket comes in, don't forget your mates, will you? Yeah. <laughs> I won't forget my mates. <laughs> <laughs> just just on the subject of, of 4 AD, just getting back to 4 AD, in 80, you just reminded me, in 87, um, there was a collaboration called Lonely is an Eyesore. I think you'll be familiar with that, Mike, because you're open-minded like I am. I, um, I, 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 don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> just and said, yes. well, that's, that's got on it uh, all, all the bands of the time, Colour Box, Colour Box, This Mortal Coil, Wolfgang Press, throw, Throwing Muses, Dead Can Dance, Cocteau Twins, Diff Juice and Clan of Zymox all on that one LP. And I think they did some absolutely ridiculously arty uh, box set, which is now like cost thousands it's so rare right. but lo lonely is an eyesore that was uh 1987 on 4 ad so anyway. ah. what happened with the uh with the who's next versus quadrophenia who who won who won <laughs> who's next won. oh stevie stevie i think you have to do your concession speech careful <laughs> <laughs> Look, just, just because, just because we, I, I, we should say we've had an argument with week, with week, and I, I should apologise to Michael because uh, we had we had a bit of a milestone that we came back at with like twice twice the number of subs, and so Michael was quite hit by that. Uh, so I've had a few subs recently. So uh, I, ca I I called him half a man. Put it that way. And I'd like to apologise because I I take it back, Michael. I shouldn't have said that. I I was. I was upset. We were arguing. It's really something like it's really forty nine percent, really, of a man. But, uh, <laughs> but had you always say, "Why, Stevie? It's not a competition." No, and I know, yeah. I know those are words you you live by. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I bought something this week. Um, I I don't know if in uh, I haven't got the page. Is Steve Schnee in the chat? Um, what was his a is a question for you? What was the big hit for the Lotus Eaters? You know, the one hit wonder. Do you remember that? That was a couple of couple of years ago or a year ago. This stream is is like famous for like asking questions that nobody has the answers to. Jesus, it's like a trademark. You, you know, you know the uh, first picture of you by the Lotus Eaters. You know, yeah. Does anybody know Madonna's first? Jesus boyfriend? Christ. <laughs> anyway, I, I bought this. I bought this. So uh, you make me big if you like. No, keep it small. Right. So the Lotus Eaters, the first picture of you is a classic one hit wonder. Uh, but do you know what their follow up single was? Uh, so I saw it for uh, two ninety nine, and it was uh, the Lotus Eaters. And it was you don't need somebody new, uh, so that's the they're a duo, so those two, uh, and there we are. You don't need it bombed in the charts, and that was the end oh. of the Lotus Eaters. But that's uh, I never seen their follow up single, so I thought, what the hell, I'll just buy it anyway. So there we are. Thank you for taking part in that competition. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. It's amazing that they had that bit. They had the big hit, the picture of you, and that just bombed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was only, it was only uh, it was only two. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe the surprise is that they had a big hit in the first place. Well, I think <laughs> the title of the band was it was quite commercial. It was quite synth poppy, and I think by that yeah. time everybody thought, "Well, we've had enough synth pop." And this this was yeah. this was pretty contrived, not very good. But I thought, you know, for the sake yeah. of Stephen Schnee and people like that, I would buy it. You know. And it's got, it's part of my eighties classic eighties collection. So I'm I'm putting together the you know iconic eighties synth pop. I'd say, I'd it's, say that, uh, you know. so that'll be the 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 eighties synth pop synth pop sort of uh, archive then will be yeah, yeah. in your I'm, house. I'm, I will be chief archivist of the uh, unwanted yeah. synth pop records yeah. in the eighties. Yeah. I, I I think I think maybe Lotus Eaters or one of those bands, you know, they they kind of missed the boat, you know, by a, yeah. by, by a year or two. You know, a bit like Marillion. And, yeah. and missed the boat by about 10 years, you know. Towards, but, towards um, the end of the 80s, it's like yeah. all that innovation. It's like the, the commercial yeah. stuff is marching in now. So everything's yeah. been commercialised. So, well, all right, we'll support you for that. Big hit right now, bugger off, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. 
I think the name of the band, the Lotus Eaters, is a bit of a handicap, don't you? I mean, yeah. are they talking about Lotus Root? What are they talking about? I mean, it's not really a hip name, and uh, I think it was a, I think it was a big mistake. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I think so because uh, the uh, now my memory might not be quite right, but there was a that there was a, a television series called The Lotus Eaters in yeah. in, in the eighties in the UK, and yeah, right. as far as I can remember, it was about. Brits who were retired and living in Greece, which is not very rock and roll, is it? No, I don't know. It's it's from a book, isn't it? It's a famous yeah. it's a famous book or a, by a famous author or famous line. Yeah, or something Mark, like that. Um, you mentioned one of my favourite band names earlier on. It was on his part of um, that. Um, I should say in, in the chat there, Dale's got it right there. He got the title, so at least somebody knew. Hello, um, thank you, Dale. Lick, lick the tins. What are they like? Lick the tins. Oh, from uh, from. Uh... I always love that name. I've never loved it enough to actually listen to him. I just think he's a great band name. Lick the tins. Oh, some great names yeah, out there. You know, they, did, they did a. They did can't help falling in love, which is a. Which is an old, which is an old song. Oh, they. Uh, it's an old, it's an old Scottish song. Can't, oh, uh, oh, can't help falling in love. It wasn't. It was kind of like, um, you know, it was very country, like Fairport Convention, you know, with, uh, with uh, flutes and, um, you know, oh. kind of sing song. It wasn't. It's not the best song on the in the soundtrack, actually. Um, that's all I can tell you. Lick the tins. I know nothing about them. Oh, I do. I just thought I'd, uh, I'd do <laughs> what, what. What are you talking about? <laughs> because because I was trying to help out Simon. He brought it up, and I thought I would add some value to the conversation. You know. <laughs> so much quiet. It's not like a George Borden stream, is it? Oh, Everybody God, yeah. expect the quiet. Yes. Isn't that quiet? It's beautiful. Were you saying were you saying you stormed out of the George Borden stream because it was so crap and you couldn't hear yourself think? It's not that it was crap, it's just that, that people were just constantly talking. It's like it wasn't a conversation. There was no talking and listening. It was just talking. And I just said, you know, this is like complete bullshit. I mean, you know, you know, there's there's an audience here and, and you guys are just like talking over each other. Actually, if, any, if anybody else wants to come up in the chat, we should say hello because uh, I know it's Dale's there. I haven't seen you before, and you know, if anybody else, Nick, if you're around, you want to come up. Sorry, I'm doing uh, Ian's job for him. You but, are. You are. Yeah, sorry, I'm not. I'm, I'm just hosting. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> come up. Anyway, I think it's that time of the night. So, oh, right. uh, to show some. Ooh. And I'm going to put this one up for. Jimmy, I'm gonna do that one. Classic. See if anybody recognizes this. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Well, Jimmy. a bit closer, Jimmy. Closer. You got to get the. the got to get in for the graphic on this. Three, two, one. There you go. Wonderful. Wonderful. This Wonderful. Before we go, Bravo. You can put it down, Stevie. Oh, the I'm showing the people. I'm showing the people. Uh, don't forget on Saturday to tune in to Rich's oh. 40th video together. Who? Who? Ooh. You and who? Richard McCook. We are on Saturday ah. we're doing our 40th video together. Wow. 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 Yeah. yeah, the two the two Daves are presenting. Yeah, Does he get Dave. a mug? <laughs> Frick and Frank. Yeah, yeah, so Dave Hill and David Bowie uh, presenting 20 <laughs> if you saw the thing. Once again, thank you very much for my astounding guests. Uh, you know, they're steamed. They're steamed. They're astounding. They're just, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're well steamed, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've had a bit to drink here. One and a half pints, Stevie. One and okay. And Yes. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 no. no shots cast this week, is it? No, that's 
next but, Sunday we're back. Yeah, there. that's that's Jason's fault, uh, isn't it? Yeah. What, yeah. what are you doing, Jimmy? Advertise. Uh, we're planning uh, top 30 singles of the 1970s tier list. So, um, there. So, Ian, yeah. Ian's got to do some heavy lifting for a change. I think yeah, uh, but there's, a lot, you, there's a lot of pressure on you to get that one right. <laughs> are you inviting Ian on again after the last one? Oh, yeah, he's a regular now. Oh, oh yeah, okay. regular old card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am the old side. <laughs> yeah, once again, uh, Mike, have a great time at the record fair. I'm sure you'll pick up some good stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and I won't be, I won't be up next week because I'm, I'm at the brood now. Oh, you are, but we want to report. Yeah. we want to report. Yes, yeah. So that's uh, that's. Jane Weaver. So if she if she if she's anything like she was uh, tonight at Jumbo, she'd be okay. Although she did she did tell me that uh, she's having difficulty learning the songs at the moment. So she says if she says next Thursday if I'm staring at the floor, um, that will be where the lyrics are posted. At least she's honest. Anyway, yeah. um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching it if you're not watching it live. And we'll see you all uh, next week, except Mike, of course. Mike's yep. got and off. and yep. don't forget to go and vote. Yeah, don't forget and go oh, and yeah. vote. The link is in the description. It's in the community tab. So go and vote for it. And you're, put it, you're going to post it on your homepage. So on you can it. It everywhere. Yeah. Come on. You'll get fed up of it. Anyway, lovely seeing you all again. I will can I can I just say can I just say thank you for those no. people that did vote for Quadrophenia? Thank you for oh. your vote anyway. So uh, yes. wonderful. So, folks. Bye for yeah. now. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.